Hello and welcome to Clean Talk, the infection control podcast. I'm your host, Brad Whitchurch. It is June 22nd, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And that means we're coming to you live from the Seal Shield Studios in beautiful downtown Orlando, Florida. Very excited to have our guest today. Dr. Will O'Connor is the Chief Medical Information Officer at Tiger Connect. Dr. O'Connor, welcome to Clean Talk. Hey, thanks, Brad. Thanks for having me. Well, we're really excited to have you on the show. I know we're going to be talking about nurse burnout and uh, the technologies that can help uh, have a a meaningful benefit towards that issue. Dr. O'Connor, what more can you tell us about yourself and why you're on Clean Talk today? Yeah, Brad, thanks again for having me. Um, Will O'Connor, I'm an orthopedic surgeon by, by background, and I am Chief Medical Information Officer at Tiger Connect. And uh, we are a company that focuses on healthcare communication. We are installed in over 7,000 locations in the United States at this point and have uh, millions of messages and transactions a day going across our platform. And, you know, really our company mission is simple. We are trying to connect caregivers in a way that gets the right information to the right person at the right time to have a positive impact on the quality of care and really focused on driving improvements in cost and quality and outcomes in the experience of healthcare. Well, it seems like a simple goal, but certainly uh, very complicated when it gets to the technology and dealing with the EMR solutions and the various hospitals and uh, providers and and the patients. Uh, So connecting all that together, I know gets very complex. I wanna dive into that technology, but First, help me understand uh, how an orthopedic like yourself um, leaves practice and uh, goes into technology. What was the inspiration for that? Yeah, I think really my entire life, I have been focused on how I can contribute to the overall improvement of, of healthcare. And, you know, growing up and being and working in healthcare, but then also being a consumer of it myself and, and with my family, you know, always saw an an opportunity for improvement and mo- mostly improvement around the ability for healthcare workers to communicate with each other. And I saw a lot of a lot of opportunities for improvement um, through the use of watching people still using pagers and and fax machines, and really became fascinated with uh, with that area and. Uh, met the founders of, of Tiger Connect several years ago, and, and we hit it off and really shared our common interest for making improvements in healthcare and, and that area. And yeah, that's how I ended up at, at Tiger Connect and, and got involved um, in the healthcare communication space. Well, we love technology here on this show, and I can't wait to hear about the technology. But, uh, you know, most of our audience are healthcare practitioners. But for the rest of us, let's put it in context. Until just a very few years ago with the implementation of EMR systems, paper folders were the standard. So now we've come so far, so many changes. How do you communicate? How do you connect all the various factions within the healthcare system between the patients, the practitioners? So tell us about what you do at Tiger Connect, how you're working to solve the problem and and how all these issues and stress relate to nurse burnout. Yeah, I think, you know, what we're really trying to do and, and most especially for nurses is give them a platform where they can communicate with the people they need to communicate with in order to take care of their patients, but then also connect them in a meaningful way to the nurse call systems that exist in hospitals that are connected to patients, but then also connect them to the patient monitors that are in the room. And, you know, you may go into a hospital today and one that may not have technology like Tiger Connect and find that nurses are not connected in a meaningful way to these devices, meaning there's no real way for them to reach out to the physician taking care of their patient, maybe they have to page them. Um, They may not be connected to the monitors in a patient room. Uh, So there might be a monitor beeping in this room and another room where they have a patient in. Um, They're not necessarily connected to the nurse call machines that are in the room. So if a patient is in need and is asking for something, there might just be a light blinking outside the room with no context for what that patient needs. 
So what ends up happening is all of this creates a very stressful environment for the nurse because there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of false alarms, and they don't have a situational awareness as to what is going on with each of their patients in real time. So that's what we're attempting to provide the nurses at Tire Connect is through a very simple user interface on their phone, connect them to the people they need to be connected to, and then connect them to the monitors and the nurse call systems that are connected to their patients and give them a view. Hey, if I have a half a dozen patients that I'm taking care of every day or, or this day or this shift, this is exactly what's going on with them in the, in the current moment. Well, it, it sounds intuitive, right? That uh, you want to make sure that you have access to the information you need and be able to communicate uh, with the people that you need to communicate with. But again, until very recently, this was a luxury that didn't exist. Um, tell us about what the current standards have been that you're replacing and improving uh, in this regard with this technology. Yeah, I mean, the, the current standards in, in many places are... Um, either using pager technology. There's still a million pagers in, in use in the United States, and many of them are being used in healthcare. There's still a lot of communication by fax machine. There's a lot of communication by landline. But what is most lacking in lots of places that I visit is a lack of integration between a calendaring or scheduling system and the messaging system. So today, if I'm, let's say I'm an emergency department physician and I have a patient that has come in with a, a fracture and I need the orthopedic surgeon on call, um, in, in many places, that physician is gonna have to look at a grease board, it might be written, a name written on a wall in, in pen on a grease board, it says, hey, this is who is on call today. And you may find their office number, you may find their page number, and then you have to page them and you have to wait for them to call back. And that waiting um, can produce a longer length of stay for the patient and a more unpleasant length of stay. And it's also not a very 21st century type of interaction between the two physicians that are trying to communicate with each other. And oftentimes it can cause a delay uh, of an hour or more, just trying to get in touch with that one physician to get them to treat your patient. So. You know, what we do at Tire Connect is provide a platform for that physician in this case, where if they needed to find the orthopedic surgeon on call, they just start to type orthopedic surgeon and the name of who's on call instantly pops up because that messaging is integrated with the schedule. So instead of waiting for a half an hour or an hour for the person to call you back, you can instantaneously get in touch with them. And when you multiply that, a thousand times a day across a hospital and across a health system, you can see how much better and faster it makes those interactions. Same with a nurse at a bedside, you know, being able to have at their fingertips to get in touch with the physician that they need to get in touch with for their patients, to activate an emergency team if something is going on with their patient where they need help. The cycle time is much faster, the friction is removed, and that's why it's much easier. But today you'll find a lot of that technology is still in hospitals, pagers, fax machines, landlines, literally calling an operator and having them page someone overhead throughout the entire hospital on the overhead speakers to try to locate um, people they need to connect with. Well, that's a great perspective, Dr. O'Connor. For our younger uh, viewers, we'll have to do another show to explain what pagers, fax machines, and landlines are. But we're glad that they're uh, becoming a thing of the past, although still relatively prevalent in healthcare. But I love that we're using the existing modern technology, bringing it to the healthcare system to improve outcomes. You talked about the improved outcomes for the patient. You know, we started off talking about nurse burnout. Let's talk about the, the issues for the practitioners. So um, how is this technology helping the practitioners with the way they're coping uh, in what's a very stressful job, particularly in these COVID times, although always? Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. I, you know, one of the goals when we work with a customer is we are very much after 
trying to reduce alarm fatigue for them and reduce the number of notifications that nurses are going to get. You know, and we do that in a number of ways. First of all, we make sure that the right information is going to the right nurse and the right person. So we want the nurse practicing at the top of their license, meaning we're routing the tasks that need nursing intervention to the nurses, but we're routing tasks that don't need intervention from the nurse to somebody else. So if the patient wants water, for example, we wouldn't route that to the nurse, we would route that to the, to the tech. Um, in a, in a non-advanced environment that doesn't have these types of technologies, the nurses are getting all of those alerts and you're interrupting the nurse and causing more fatigue. If they're working on something complicated, if they're trying to give a patient um, medication and the dosing is um, complicated and the preparation is complicated, you don't want to interrupt them with a patient that wants water. So. That's the first thing we're, we're doing is routing messages and information to the right person so as to not to disturb the nurse if we don't, um, if, if, if we don't need to. So that's really the, the first way we're doing it. The second way we're doing it is we're filtering information coming from patient monitors. So oftentimes the information coming from a patient monitor um, is, a, is a false alarm or temporary false alarm or something that doesn't need to interrupt the nurse. So we try to apply some intelligence and some filtering so that only real alarms are, are being passed along to the nurse, further reducing that alarm fatigue that, that they are getting. Um, when you combine those two things, you can really have a major impact on reducing the number of interruptions for the nurse. And we know when um, the number of interruptions go down, burnout goes down. Well, and quality of care has to go up, right? When you're integrating the diagnostics and using an AI to qualify as well as quantify those diagnostics to make the healthcare system more efficient and make the outcomes for the patient better. I mean, it sounds like uh, like a, a great solution to me. Let's dive a little bit into the specificity of it. Now, your product, the, the Tiger uh, Connect um, um, clinical uh, communicate co collaborator, right? Clinical collaborator. It's a uh, cloud-based app, right? And it can reside on what kind of a device? Yeah, it's it's all in the cloud. Um, you know, which which really makes it nice as far as reliability. It's something people can can always count on, and it'll work on any sort of device that the end user has. So if they're a desktop user, it'll work on the desktop. If they have an Android or an iPhone, it'll work on those devices as well. And we took special care with the user experience. We kind of felt like in healthcare, um, you know, some of the EMRs in particular, but some of the other technology that clinicians have been forced to use has been a little clunky. So we took special care with the UX to make sure if you're an iPhone user, when you pick it up, you already know how to use it. It's an iPhone type user interface. Same with the Android um, as well. The user interface looks different for the Android as it does to the desktop. So we're really trying to meet clinicians where they are. So no matter what type of device they're on, and many switch back and forth. Many nurses, in fact, will do work on their desktop and then they'll switch over to their phone if they're in the patient room and the integration between the two is seamless. So greater flexibility, but I'm going to put you on the spot. We actually have a question from one of our audience members. Uh, Danny Caballero asks about the relationship with telehealth. So we're talking about how uh, your, your platform integrates with devices within the healthcare system. What about integration with telehealth? Yeah, we, we have done um, telehealth right over this platform. And in fact, uh, COVID was really the impetus um, to do that uh, with, with the product. We had previously only been focused on uh, clinician communication and communication within the health system. So we opened up our platform to include uh, telehealth um, now, and we do quite a bit of telehealth over the platform 
um, both in the form of an impromptu um, telehealth visit that may need to take place immediately, where just with one click within the application, uh, the physician or the nurse can connect to um, can connect to that patient very easily. So it's a very frictionless way to do telehealth. The other the other area we see it being used a lot in telehealth is for um, consults inside the hospital, um, and particularly in COVID, where they were low on PPE and the physician who needed to be consulted on the patient couldn't necessarily go in the room, being able to use the technology for telehealth um, there inside the hospital was something we saw a lot of as well, particularly during COVID. I'm sure that's true. We've seen uh, really the proliferation now of telehealth as a result of COVID, certainly a step in the right direction from my perspective. What other kind of uh, impact have you seen from COVID as it relates to your technology and uh, the demand for your solution? Yeah, I think COVID, we, we saw a couple of things. One, we saw a, um, a massive spike in utilization. So we track very closely the number of messages that are going across the platform. Uh, of course, we're not able to see the content of the messages, but we can see the number. And we saw a huge spike during COVID. The other thing we saw were uh, was organizations using the technology in new ways to specifically coordinate care around COVID. So within the application, they were setting up special teams related to um, COVID airway teams, where they needed a quick airway response if they had to come and intubate a patient very, very quickly. We saw a lot of use of that. But then also even for things coordinating around um, personal protective equipment, when they would be out in a certain location, being able to quickly send a message to a monitored uh, role or team within Tire Connect that was in charge of getting PPE to locations quickly, we saw a lot of of use um, around that. And and we saw resultant improvements um, in patient care because clinicians were able to get in the room faster because they were able to get the gear they needed faster and respond to the patient, uh, many time a patient in uh, patient need uh, much more quickly. Well, you know, we're an infection control podcast. So I find this fascinating that just through superior communication, greater efficiency, you can have potentially better infection control outcomes. Is there anything else you can tell us about the effect of this technology on infection control, uh, potential benefits towards infection control, either today or in the future, as this uh, technology becomes more prolific? Yeah, there, there's actually quite a few um, applications for it because, you know, as you remember from the beginning, we're trying to get the right information to the right person at the right time. Well, many times that is a, um, a culture that has come back from the lab. And perhaps a patient is on an antibiotic and five days later, that culture has grown out and shows that the antibiotic that they're on is resistant to that culture. Sometimes that test um, isn't noticed by anyone right away. Um, With Tire Connect for a test like that, we're able to notify the treating nurse or clinician instantly such that that antibiotic could then be switched having, you know, some significant implications on, um, you know, on infection control, right? You don't want to keep hitting a patient with antibiotics that, um, you know, it's not working. The sensitivity is not right for the organism that they have. So, um, yeah, there's there's lots of different um, use cases, but that's a fairly common one where we're sending a, uh, a culture result or a lab result back to a clinician or a nurse so they can act um, on, you know, on that information, whatever it is. Well, you know, it's always been an issue uh, with the disinfection of devices. So whether it's a, an ASCOM pager or whatever your communication device is, uh, cross-contamination is an issue. Are you seeing changes in the way hardware is utilized, um, maybe more personal devices being utilized within the healthcare system, or are you seeing most of these devices being owned, operated, and going through some type of sterile processing within the organization? Do you have any insight into that? Yeah, I've seen a little, I've seen sort of an acceleration of both, um, where I've seen people 
concerned with infection control, where they are buying shared devices that uh, nurses in particular would share um, after a, a shift and they would be uh, cleaned during the shift and after the shift. I've seen some of that. And then I've also seen a massive growth in BYOD, um, most particularly with physicians and other non-nursing job, but some with nursing as well, where people are looking at a, a phone um, like a stethoscope, right? A stethoscope is something you purchase with your own money. You bring it from home. You use it in your patients. You're responsible for you know, cleaning it essentially and, and disinfecting it between patients, seeing some of that same attitude now with um, phones, with communication devices, where people are willing to put the hospital software that is needed to do the job on their on their personal device and they're expected to use it. Well, um, you know, obviously that brings up uh, opportunities for device disinfection. You know, now that you can use your personal cell phone, uh, when you're at work, you have the cross-contamination concern of bringing that home to your family. And so uh, greater need potentially for device disinfection uh, for those devices that are leaving the facility. Uh, we're starting to see more of that as well. But let's step aside from that for a second and talk about some other areas of concern because you have a cloud-based software app and we know there's some significant uh, concerns within healthcare around a couple of things with software. One is security and one is HIPAA compliance. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how your software addresses those issues? Yeah, we, you know, Brad, we take those concerns extremely seriously. It's one of the most important things that we do. Um, from a security perspective, we are high trust certified. It's the, uh, most stringent um, security standards in healthcare technology. And it is something that we have to review um, and renew um, every every year. And we do that with um, with high trust and we maintain that certification and we've we've done so for for several years. Um, you know, as far as capacity availability is concerned, um, we are in the cloud. Um, we have multiple um, points of redundancy built in um, throughout the platform, such that last year um, we were able to provide 100% uptime uh, for our, our clients. Um, it is something that they have grown to rely on. And, you know, in fact, to your concern with, with security, and I'll extend that to ransomware, um, we have had several clients where their main infrastructure uh, that included their EMR was attacked, um, was, was brought down, um, in some cases for an extended period. And the lifeline that they used to take care of their patients during that time was Tire Connect. Um, because we do not have to be connected to the hospital infrastructure and part of that, because we are reside 100% in the cloud, we were available when the rest of their technology stack was not. Well, I'm sure you have to have the highest level of security and of course, HIPAA compliance being so important in healthcare. I know that's the standard that you have to meet. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, your predictions for the future in this technology. You know, Where do you see this industry going and how can uh, technology like Tiger Connect software uh, help to move us forward? Yeah, I, I think we'll see it being used more in a couple of areas. I think first people have have recognized that not only is use of this technology better for nurses and clinicians um, and for patients and patient outcomes, but it has a big impact on the bottom line. And um, as far Good, as let's talk about the economics, tell it. Yeah. Tell us about the economics. What What is the bottom line impact? Yeah, I mean, there's impacts for both cost and revenue. I think from a, you know, from a cost perspective, we really focus on and we're able to have an impact on length of stay and, and lowering length of stay. And um, whether it is through treating disease processes faster, so they're not as uh, severe. So something like responding to an acute care stroke faster 
and getting that patient a better result, lowering that length of stay um, is, is one way to lower costs. But then also just being more efficient about moving patients through the system. If it's easier for me to coordinate you know, with the six, seven, or 10 people I need to coordinate with to move a patient from the emergency department to the intensive care unit, it's going to go faster if those people can communicate on a platform like Tiger Connect. And what that opens up is additional capacity. And that's where the additional revenue comes in because you're making all your employees, most particularly the nurses, the doctors, the transporters, the people serving the meals, the people doing the radiology tests, you're making everybody faster. You're opening up additional capacity in the system. So all those patients that have been waiting in your emergency department to be seen can be moved through the system faster. So that's how we impact both cost and revenue. So soft costs, hard costs, I would imagine that uh, there can be some cost reduction in technology transfer as well. If you're replacing uh, landlines and fax machines and pagers uh, with BYOD devices, uh, I would imagine there's some hard cost savings there as well. Oh, yeah, tons. Um, you'd be shocked. Uh, I talked to... Um, fairly large organization a couple of weeks ago. And when they added up from all their different departments and facilities, they were spending over a million dollars a year on pagers. So unbelievable. Yeah. yeah just replacing those alone, um, you know, certainly was able to cover the cost of the, of the solution to say nothing of the other technologies, but there's typically somewhere between six and 10 technologies that we can replace with, with just tiger connect. And many of those are, you know, legacy and sometimes expensive, legacy technologies. Well, uh, the beginning of the end for the beeper king, it sounds like. Uh, <laughs> Dr. O'Connor, if people want to find out more about Tiger Connect, where can they go? Yeah, they should just go to uh, tigerconnect.com and they can learn more right on our website. Fantastic. Well, Dr. O'Connor, I appreciate you being on Clean Talk today. Technology that can improve efficiency, improve patient and practitioner outcomes, and reduce costs all from Tiger Connect. Our guest today has been Dr. Will O'Connor. My name is Brad Whitchurch. I'm your host. Thank you for joining Clean Talk. Until next time, keep it clean.